Our top stories today from the gatewaypundit.com. Watch as Univision panics when they realize that they showed Kamala Harris's teleprompter live on air during a town hall. We're covering this embarrassing story and so much more here on the Gateway Pundits Week in Review. My name is Elijah Schaefer, and this is the Gateway Pundits Week in Review, where we cover the top five stories of the last 24 hours in around 10 minutes. Our top story today, Christina Lila reports at thegatewaypundit.com. Watch as Univision panics when they realize they showed Kamala Harris's teleprompter live on air during a town hall. Let's get into it. Kamala Harris got caught using a teleprompter during Thursday night's Univision town hall in Las Vegas. Harris pandered to Latina voters by participating in a town hall hosted by Univision. Now, the internal polls for Harris must be horrific. Of course, Kamala Harris had to use a teleprompter because she had no clue what she's talking about. I want to play the video for you here. We have it directly posted uh, by none other than uh, the Trump war room. Check this out. Here's her getting caught. Victim of crime. Are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? The only question I ever asked is, are you OK? And sadly, we have seen over the last two weeks since Hurricane Hill. I think everything is fake. Um, in a more remarkable uh, notion with this stuff, I also want to remind you that Kamala Harris also released an ad for men, which I don't think we're actually talking about today, but I think it would be uh, worth mentioning in a little bit that her entitlement and what she thinks she deserves as a candidate is just reaching. Now, speaking of the embarrassing thing, Trump drops a major announcement regarding his daughters during a Detroit speech originally published by Brian Chai. In the midst of a hotly contested presidential election, former President Donald Trump, the Republican nominee for president, shared some big family news about his last uh, least visible child. Well, Don Jr., Eric Ivanka, and even Barron have generally been up front and center in various capacities for their father. Tiffany Trump hasn't been nearly as public as half her siblings. However, that's not to say that she's completely stayed away from politics, but Tiffany has been quite a bit involved in her father's politics as Trump's other children uh, maybe to a lesser degree. And it's probably going to stay that way for a while. That's because she's pregnant. So that's uh, some good news. Trump is going to be a grandfather again. Um, so more grandkids is always a blessing. You guys know that if you have children, it's not a blessing from God to even have grandchildren. Absolutely fantastic. Now, that being said, you know how I mentioned how Kamala Harris uh, is now pandering to Latinas uh, and to individuals. So she put out an ad. This is not a joke, by the way. She put out an ad pandering to men because she's losing the male vote, check this out. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof bourbon. Neat. Man enough to cook my steak rare. Man enough to deadlift 500, then braid the shit out of my daughter's hair. You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat carburetors for breakfast. I ain't afraid of bears. That's what bear hugs are for. And I'll tell you another thing I sure as shit am not afraid of. Women. I'm not afraid of women. I'm not afraid of women. They want to control their bodies? I say go for it. They want to use IVF to start a family? I'm not afraid of families. They want to be childless cat ladies? Have all the cats you want. Woman wants to be president? Well, I hope she has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full-throated endorsement. Because I'm man enough to support women. Man enough to know what kind of donuts I like. Man enough to admit I'm lost even when I refuse to ask for directions. Man enough to not ban young women from reading little women. Or one of those pants books. Man enough to raw dog a f All right. Uh, I've seen enough of that. Um, everybody in that video was not straight. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with that or that we talk about those kind of issues here at the Gateway Pundit. But, I mean, if you wanted to convince men, just don't make a gay video. It's pretty much uh, that simple. Now, speaking of something quite interesting here, uh, Border Patrol whistleblower was found in O'Keefe's Line in the Sand film receives memo from U.S. Uh, Border Patrol demanding answers. The whistleblower responds with fire. Check this out. Zachary uh, Apotheker, the Border Patrol whistleblower who appeared in James O'Keefe's film titled Line in the Sand, received a memo from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection demanding answers about his involvement in the documentary. Undercover journalist James O'Keefe goes to the front lines of the migrant industrial complex using hidden cameras and raw testimonials. O'Keefe reveals the shocking reality of the U.S. border crisis like none other. You can watch the video there. Now, the memo uh, actually ended up reading that you are hereby instructed to provide a detailed memorandum responding to the questions below no later than the end of your shift on October 9th. You will be provided time during your shift to complete your memorandum. Background, it has come to the management's attention that video clips in the movie Line in the Sand have aired on social media or the internet, and you have been observed in these video clips in uniform and in a service vehicle. Did you participate in the film interview, meeting, or discussion for the movie Line in the Sand? Boom, boom, boom. Questions, questions, questions. 
They're putting more time into questioning somebody for being a whistleblower about what's going on at our border, the human trafficking, than actually fighting the human trafficking. That's the kind of country that we live in. Now, many of you might have heard uh, of somebody else who's been kicking butt. His name is, uh, you know, I guess he's James O'Keefe, and he's doing a really, really good job. Um, if you want to watch the movie Line in the Sand, my friend of mine just went and saw the premiere of it, and it was absolutely fantastic. But you can go check it out for yourself. Additionally, you got to watch this as Governor Ron DeSantis nukes a far-left reporter on his global warning, uh, global warming propaganda during Hurricane Milton presser. We have the full video for you. I'm going to play it here in just a second. One of the most important parts to realize, it's about a three-minute video, but he completely nukes this guy. Check it out. Global warming. Tornadoes? Yeah, it's increasing tornadoes. I, I think you could go back and find tornadoes uh, for all of human history, for sure. Um, and especially, you know, Florida, uh, you know, how does this storm uh, rate in, um, in, in kind of the, the history of storms? Uh, I think it hit with uh, a barometric pressure of, what was it, about 950 millibars when it, yes, when it hit? Um, which uh, I, I think if you go back to, to 1851, uh, there's probably been 27 hurricanes uh, that have had lower bear. So the lower the barometric pressure, the stronger it is. I think there have been about 27 hurricanes that have had lower barometric pressure on landfall than Milton did. And of those, um, 17 uh, occurred, I think, prior to 1960. And the most powerful hurricane on record since the 1850s in the state of Florida occurred in the 1930s, the Labor Day hurricane. Barometric pressure on that was 892 millibars. Uh, it totally wiped out uh, the keys. Uh, we've never seen anything like it. And that remains head and shoulders above any powerful hurricane that we've ever had in the state of Florida. The most deadly hurricane we've ever had was in 1928. The Okeechobee hurricane killed over 4,000 people. Fortunately, uh, we aren't going to have anything close to that on this hurricane. But even ones like Ian, where you had, uh, you know, deep wasn't even close to that. So you know, I just think people should put this in perspective there. They try to, to take different things that happen with tropical weather and act like it's something, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, you know, this is something that the state has dealt with for its entire history. Uh, and it's something that we'll continue to be to deal with. I think what's changed is we've got 23 million people, um, a storm that hit so the potential for, for that damage um, has grown. But what's also changed is our ability to do the prevention, uh, to pre-stage the assets. I mean, we never did the pre-staging of power uh, assets until I became governor. Now people like expect that, but that wasn't what was done in the past. That's why people would be out with power for three weeks and we'd have hurricanes. We thought that that's not good. Now we have to pay to get these guys to come in. But my view is the quicker you get everyone hooked up, the better off the economy is going to be anyway. So why don't we just do that? Uh, having the different search and rescue, having a state guard, all these different things are just bringing different tools to the fight. Uh, and it allows us to respond more effectively. So if we had the tools that we had in 1928 to fight an Ian or to fight some of these, you would have had higher death tolls. There's no question about that. Now, as many people were noticing, uh, this was crazy. In this county where we're currently recording, four people died, actually, uh, and 12 were critically injured from what I heard. It's pretty crazy. This is just like 40 minutes north of where the studio is. Um, so it was like right around here where there's some, some serious damage and we're praying for the families. Now, many of you might have known uh, of an individual who has been kicking butt his entire life. I'm not talking about James O'Keefe. I'm talking about Chuck Norris. Now, Chuck Norris is 84 years old, but I saw him in a recent video, and he was just flipping around, doing crazy stuff. And I was like, where did he get all that energy? Well, Chuck made a few simple changes in his life, particularly one thing. And he feels like he got his energy back to when he was 50 years old. So I'm like, well, how do we find out? I mean, I, I want to do this. I don't want some invasive uh, thing that's going to, you know, I, I need to give me energy. I want to find out what this guy's doing. Well, he has all the information for you right here at chuckdefense.com slash pundit. You can watch a video how you can make this one change to feel younger. And it's not just for men. His wife also is older, but she said she feels like she's in her 50s, feeling a lot younger and feeling like she can kick butt. So whether you're a man or a woman, you want your energy back, check it out today by watching the video at chuckdefense.com slash pundit, C-H-U-C-K-D-E-F-E-N-S-E dot -E -E com slash P-U-N-D-I-T. Check it out today. Now, as many of you guys know, our last story today is quite interesting. The emasculation of the American male, testosterone-crushing chemical herbicide was banned in Europe gets sprayed freely on U.S. crops and ends up in our food. 
Maybe that's uh, what happened to all those men in that video for Kamala Harris. It turns out that a guest contributor uh, reported that we've all heard about a historic drop in male testosterone over the past 50 to 60 years, but rarely does anyone delve into the causes of the disturbing trend. A recent guest on the Joe Rogan podcast blew the whistle on a chemical herbicide widely used on large swaths of American croplands that has wrought catastrophic effects on the reproductive hormones and organs of the American male. Atrazine, a herbicide sold under various brand names such as Bullet, Lariat, Guardsman, Max, Bicep 2, Magnum, and Dual 2, Magnum, and Metal 2, and amongst others, is proven to have harmful effects on boys and men of all ages. Dr. Casey Means explained that atrazine is widely present in American foods, and it's turning the frogs gay, according to Alex Jones. You can read the rest of uh, the story there, but it says that the Vigilant News Network reports that atrazine is a widely used herbicide sprayed on crops like corn and sugarcane to control weeds. It disrupts hormone function by increasing the activity of an enzyme called uh, aromatase, which converts testosterone into estrogen. So essentially, we don't want to use it. Now, I'm at least blessed uh, with the with the stores that are in my neighborhood and stuff. We have very high quality produce that doesn't have like I, I shop at like a fresh market, Whole Foods. Right. Um, and sometimes if I go to Publix, I don't really get my vegetables there. But I still buy like bagged salads and stuff. I should check in to make sure that I'm not taking any atrazine because uh, I'm a, I'm not a frog, but I don't want to be uh, turned to a gay frog, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm Elijah Schaefer. Thank you so much again for watching the Gateway Pundits Week in Review. Have a great rest of the week, and may God bless the United States of America. I'm signing out.